Imagine a world where words weren't necessary to convey emotions or sentiments. A world where a single flower could speak volumes or the arrangement of petals held the key to understanding the unspoken words of the heart. The petal may wither, but their message remains forever. This is a famous quote from The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenberg. This world that we imagined was common not too long ago, and remnants of its tendrils still appear in today's society. Today, we will be delving into the enchanting world of the secret language of flowers from its historical roots to the symbolism and variety of arrangements. Floriography, or the language of flowers, traces its roots back to some of the world's most ancient civilizations, but it wasn't popularized until the Victorian era in the 19th century. During this time, social norms dictated strict rules of etiquette, and it was commonly frowned upon to express one's emotions as freely as we do today. Due to this, communication took a path away from words and steered towards a carefully selected blossoms. Due to this strict hold over vocal exchanges, entire conversations could be held through the exchange of floral arrangements. Each flower was carefully chosen to convey a sentiment or emotion, and this art of florography became a sophisticated way to convey the desire of the heart. Florography even became so popular that it was often written into popular classic mediums at the time, such as Shakespeare, Jane Austen, and Emily Dickinson. These famous authors used flowers to foreshadow events and often used it to symbolize what their characters were truly feeling. To understand the secret language of flowers, we must first familiarize ourselves with the symbolism attributed to each blossom. The rose, for example, holds the sentiment of passion, love, and beauty. Another popular flower was the tulip, which conveyed the feelings of perfect love and elegance. Lilies often symbolized purity, virtue, and devotion, and the carnation portrayed perfect love and fascination. Another factor that played a large part in communication was the color of the blossom. Because so many flowers come in an array of colors, giving a yellow rose, for example, instead of a red rose, told a completely different story. Red was one of the most popular colors as it symbolized passion, love, affection, and desire. Pink was often saved for grace and innocence. Yellow was for joy, happiness, and friendship. And white was saved for purity, humility, and innocence. Now, after learning a little bit of that, hopefully you can see why receiving a yellow rose, which would portray friendship and beauty, when you were expecting a passion and desire-filled red rose, could be detrimental to someone. There also is the fact of how the flower was delivered. If the bloom was delivered as a single flower, it often portrayed simplicity and focus. The single flower was also used in the initial sta stages of romance, showing a budding interest in someone and hinting at a potential for deeper feelings to develop in the future. If the blossoms were sent as a bouquet, the arrangement often held a deeper and a variety of different emotions. A bouquet allowed the sender to pick a multitude of flowers, each conveying a different message. If the flowers are symmetrical or in even pairs in the arrangement, it often represented harmony and balance. Asymmetrical bouquets, or odd number of flowers on the other hand, were meant to invoke feelings of spontaneity and excitement. This gave a plethora of options for the sender to pick exactly what sentiments they wish to convey to their person of interest. The type and color of blossoms one might send also hinged on what context or what the situation was. If you were sending flowers for a romantic gesture or for courtship, you would want to stick with reds and flowers that convey romantic feelings, such as roses, tulips, carnations, and dahlias, as they are all very common flowers that symbolize passion, love, and desire. 
When sending blossoms for apologies or gratitude, it is recommended to stick with pinks or yellows. Roses, hydrangeas, sweet peas, and irises all symbolize hope, trust, understanding, and gratitude. For special occasions, such as weddings, you would want to focus more on the emotion you wish to convey. If it is your own marriage, on the other hand, you will want to pick emotions and sentiments that you wish to carry throughout your union. The flowers can also vary depending on the couple's significance or their personalities, or in common days, most people like to pick colors that match the theme. Some popular choices are roses for love and passion, sunflowers for adoration and loyalty, primrose for young love and eternal love, or carnations for love and fascination. Most often, red and whites are used, and that's why they became the most popular, but like I said before, couples do like to match their themes of their weddings nowadays. Including floral centerpieces as well helps create a beautiful and whimsical romantic setting. For funerals, on the other hand, you will want to stick with whites or yellows to bring comfort to the mourning family and to send off the lost loved one. Popular funeral flowers are lilies, which convey innocence of the departed soul, forget-me-nots for true love and memories, lavender for serenity and calmness, and zinnia for thoughts for absent friends. In conclusion, the language of flowers is a timeless art form that transcends any language barrier and cultural divides. From its ancient origins to its resurgence in the Victoria area and beyond, Florography continues to captivate and inspire us with its symbolism. As we navigate the twists and turns of our human emotions and the world, let us not overlook the silent and timeless elegance of nature's blooming messengers. The next time you encounter a bouquet of flowers or wish to send one, take a moment to appreciate the hidden message within each bloom. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.